Hey class, it is Mrs. Gilling here, and I am your Sociology B instructor this quarter, and I'm super excited about that. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of the class, let me introduce you to my family. So this, like I said, I'm Mrs. Gilling, and this is my family. So this is my husband, Ethan. He grew up in Colorado uh, farming. He grew a lot of potatoes and a lot of alfalfa and helped out with a lot of the animals, the cows and the horses. And he even spent a few years here in the Oregon area, kind of on the border of Oregon and Idaho. But he spent some years there in Oregon growing onions. Now he's an estimator for a disaster cleanup company. So whenever someone's house floods or has a fire, which is super sad, or when they have wind damage or when those big snowstorms happen and their house has damage, he's the guy that goes in and helps fix those houses back up to where they're supposed to be. And he's a great guy. He's really great for our family. We love him a lot. This is actually, let me show you an updated picture because this picture is old. As you can see, we have a new member in our family. So this is Taylor. Taylor is almost five years old and she loves gymnastics. You will see her running around the house trying to do flips in the air and cartwheels and back handsprings that I have no idea how to do. And she goes to a class every week for it to learn even more. So that's definitely her passion right now. She's kind of bummed because she has a late birthday, so she didn't get to go to school this year. But next year she'll start kindergarten, and she's very excited about that. And she's also a really good big sister. She takes care, especially of this little one. She loves to kind of be a mini mom to her. This is Skylar. She is almost three, and she's our funniest child, I think. Well, the other day we were, we were in the backyard, and we were running around, and she goes, Mama! I can't keep up because I got you know yeggs. And then the next day she goes running around the house and she says, Mama, I don't got you know yeggs anymore. So pretty much they grew overnight, I guess. But she's a, a really funny kid, a happy kid, and we, we're happy to have her in our family too. And then our newest is Parker. She's almost six months old, and she's the happiest baby I've ever met in my life. She wants everyone else to be happy too. So if she wants your attention, she will stare at you and smile until you acknowledge her presence and you smile back. So it's it's pretty fun to, to have Parker around. And like I, I said, I, I am Mrs. Gilling. I graduated about five years ago from BYU. Go Cougars! We're really big BYU football fans, so I'm sorry BSU fans out there. That's, that's where we're at. And I, uh, I love teaching. I love social studies. I also love, like I said, watching BYU football, spending time outdoors with my family. We like to go bargain shopping at thrift stores to see what kind of cool stuff we can find. But that's uh, that's a little bit about me and my family. We do have one more person I need to introduce you to, and that is Heidi. She is our standard poodle, and we've also nicknamed her Princess Poodle Pants. I don't know why, because she's really not that princessy. Like, she will come up to you and she will burp in your face, which is disgusting, and she is a dog, so it's really weird. But she really loves her sisters, and she takes really good care of them. So we'll keep her around. So that's uh, me and my own. Here's a little bit more about your course. So course assignments. First of all, let me move my, my cute face out of your way. The checkpoints are worth 15%. They are found at the end of each lesson and they help you review what you just studied to make sure you understand. You have three attempts on those. So if you take it the first time and you don't get 100%, what do you think you should do? Should you stop? No, take it again. If you don't get 100% the second time, Use your third attempt. These are about learning. If you're not passing the checkpoints, it means you don't understand the material. So you either need to go back and read it or you need to reach out to me and ask a few questions. But please don't just stop on that first attempt. Our next thing we have, if it's going to come up, there we go, are discussions. You're probably familiar with these if you've been at iSucceed for a while. But you complete them at the end of each lesson and... You, that's a little bit old information there. I should get rid of that. But the way it works is at the end of each lesson, you answer a discussion question. I have a discussion rubric embedded into the course that I want you to review. It goes over the specific details of what I'm looking for. But pretty much answer the question fully and write at least three sentences. If you do that, you should get full points on those. If you don't, you write at least three sentences. I'm going to leave you a comment that says something like, you're off to a good start, but you need to write at least three sentences. Uh, if there's more than one question in, within like each dis discussion question, so sometimes it'll be like, answer these two questions. You can pick one of them if there's more than one on each one. But there are 30 discussion prompts, and I expect you to turn in 30 of those. There may be 29 now that I think about it. Sometimes the last one doesn't have it, but 
let's say 30, whatever's in there, that's what you need to do. If you don't get full points on those discussion prompts, you can do them again. But the way the system's set up is it won't alert me to tell me that you turned in a new discussion post. So if you do choose to make edits to any of your discussion posts, please send me an email or leave me a comment letting me know that you updated it and changed it so that I can grade it. If you don't do that, then I don't know, so you won't get points. So please, 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 if you ever fix a discussion, let me know. But if you answer all those discussion questions, all 29 or 30 of them, like I said, then you will do great there and do all right. Next, we have exams at the end of the first five unit there's a content exam at the end of unit six there's a vocabulary exam you get one attempt on these i only allow one attempt on exams because there's study guides that they have and if you're using those study guides then you should do pretty well on the exams historically in my classes people that use the study guides do a lot better than people that don't so if you're reading all the materials doing the checkpoints filling out those study guides studying from them you'll do really well on the exams the final exam is at the end of unit six, and it covers topics from each of the six units. You get one attempt, so please study hard before taking that, that final exam. Let's keep going, there's a few more things. So projects, so there is a project in every unit in sociology. It seems like a lot, but there are some projects. So the first unit is a writing project that I have everybody do. But after that, I give you options for what you can do. Usually the options involve um, either writing a paper or there's a, a, a video you can watch and answer questions on. You can choose any of the options. It doesn't matter to me as long as you're doing a project for each unit. I make unit video assignments that go over those projects. So if you ever like look over one of the projects and you're like, um, I'm really not quite sure how to do this one, Go find the video for it, the unit video assignment for that unit, watch it, and it'll give you more feedback. If you're still confused after that, though, feel free to reach out to me, and I'll help you help you with those. But projects are worth 20%. I do allow, though, up to three attempts. So if you turn one in and you don't get the grade you want, look over my feedback, fix your mistakes, turn it in again, and I'll, and I'll definitely give you more points there. Next, we have workbooks. If you've been with ICC for a while, you definitely know what workbooks are. They're questions that you find throughout each lesson, and they are worth 10%. There's absolutely no reason not to get 100% on these because you get an unlimited number of attempts. So if you get it wrong the first time, what should you do? Do it again. Let's make sure that we're getting 100% on our workbooks. Video assignments, I talked about those just a second ago, but they are at the beginning of each unit and they let you know more about your project. So please watch them. This is your first video assignment. All you're gonna do is after you watch the videos, you're gonna answer a few questions in a text box. They're super easy questions like, did you watch the video? What do you have to do for your project? Do you have any questions? Answer those, turn them in. Easy 10%, very easy. So please, please, please complete those. But that's, uh, that's the course assignments. Let me tell you about your first project. Like I said, it is a writing project. Let's move my, my face out of the way again. So, write an essay analyzing how social stratification has affected your community. Consider its effects on community institutions such as neighborhoods, schools, and jobs. Provide detailed examples to support your analysis. Your paper should be five paragraphs long. Follow standard essay format. Your essay must have an introduction as the first paragraph, three paragraphs in the body of the paragraph, paper, excuse me, and one concluding paragraph that ties your paper together. Here's some specific requirements that I'm looking for. First of all, you need to start with an introduction. Your introduction paragraph needs to have some sort of an attention grabber. Give the reader something to, to draw them in. So that could be, maybe you start off with a statistic about social stratification. Maybe you share a short story about something that you've seen in one of your neighborhoods. Maybe you ask a question. Um, whatever it is, but, but do something to grab the reader in. Then state your thesis statement. Let the readers know that you're going to be talking about social stratification in your life. Then state your three main points. So your three main points are going to be that you're going to discuss social stratification in your neighborhood, in your school, and in jobs. Your body paragraphs. Your first paragraph is going to talk about how social stratification affects your neighborhood. And the key word here is your. Don't focus on neighborhoods in general. Think about your neighborhood and how social stratification affects it. I know you may not know what social stratification is right now, but as you get through your, your lessons, you're going to learn what that, what that is and what that means. And if you don't understand that, reach out to me and I'll help you. But one paragraph about how social stratification affects your specific neighborhood. 
Then you're going to write a paragraph about how social stratification affects your school. If you can't think of anything for the online school, think about a school that maybe you attended in the past or think about a school in your neighborhood. But how does it affect your school? And then write a paragraph about how social stratification affects jobs. You may not have a job. If you have a job, I want you to think about your job and write it. If, if you don't have a job, though, maybe think about one of your parents' jobs or maybe your grandparents' job or somebody in your neighborhood's job and think about how social stratification affects that job and write a paragraph about it. Then you're going to need to have your conclusion where you restate your thesis statement, remind the reader of your main point, uh, the main point of your essay, and then restate your three main points. And that's it. Correct it for grammar. Make sure you don't have a lot of spelling or, or grammar errors. And then, then turn it in. So that is that is your, your very first project. If, uh, if you need help, reach out to me. I do have office hours on Tuesdays from 11 to 12. I'm also available other times. So if that doesn't work, you know, shoot me an email and, and we can set up a different time. You can also send me a text. You can instant message me. That's a great way to get a hold of me throughout the day. You can call me, whatever works for you. But please, if you do need help, that's what I'm here for. I'd much rather help you than sit and just be like waiting, grading papers all day. So definitely reach out if you need help. But other than that, I, uh, I'm excited to be your teacher this quarter, and I'm looking forward to helping you. You guys have a great week. Thank <laughs> you.